Respiratory infections are caused by more than influenza. It's not just influenza. Influenza is just one of many pathogens that can cause respiratory infections. And then the problems that go along with respiratory infections, including disability. We're exposed to pathogens every day. You're exposed through touch, through airborne exposure. These things cause a lot of disease, and we need to understand how they cause disease, how the immune system combats them, so that we can find ways to make it better, reduce the impact of disease or reduce the impact of infection uh, on the individual. Some have said the immune system is both the cause and the solution to all human disease. I think it's true because the immune system not only fights off pathogens, the immune system is important for maintaining homeostasis or the normal function of the body. So it affects everything from bone repair to cognitive processes to infections. I direct the Respiratory Pathogens Research Center at the University of Rochester. It's the only center of its type in the nation, funded by NIH. Its mission is to study respiratory pathogens of all types, to reduce the burden of disease, develop better diagnostics, and come up with treatments that reduce the impact of those infections. The two largest studies we have ongoing in the RPRC are both focused on infants. The first study is focused on infants infected with respiratory syncytial virus. You can have two kids that are otherwise identical in their demographic, in their age, in their makeup, their health status, and they'll both get infected with RSV in a given year, and one of them will have a runny nose, and the other one will end up on a respirator in the hospital. Why? We don't know why. So we're trying to understand what are the factors that predict which kids are more at risk than others. One of our goals is to find something we can test for, a measurement we can make when a child comes down with RSV that will tell the doctor, this child's gonna have a mild disease and this one's gonna end up in the hospital and prevent that from happening, intervene sooner. Because we do have ways we can intervene, but until you can predict who's gonna have mild and who's gonna have severe disease, we can't use those interventions. The symptoms are very much like influenza, a runny nose, fever, cough, body aches. It's harder to tell in a young child, right? Because often the child can't tell you what they're feeling, so we have to observe. It kills a large number of children every year, particularly children under six months of age when they're exposed. So once a child matures enough, their lungs develop uh, uh, far enough, they can sustain an infection better than a, a younger child. But those children under six months of age are very much at risk during the RSV season for developing severe disease. The VISTA Collaboratory is a collaborative space where scientists can gather to visualize complex data sets. At its heart is an eight foot tall by 20 foot wide ultra high definition display connected directly to our supercomputers. And we use this to look at our data sets. The problem when you generate very large data sets, including data sets coming from these infants at risk, how do you communicate those data sets? How do you study them? How do you view them? So we need to have different formats in which we can interact with the data. So we created this facility to complement our powerful supercomputers as a way that the people can interact with the data that they're generating. And so research in the collaboratory is in the development of tools to understand our data better, ways to communicate it and visualize it. The screen itself is just a medium. It's really about the room. It's really about the collaborations. And we try to bring together scientists from many disciplines, optics, computer science, mathematics, statistics, to work on these data sets to solve important biomedical research problems. Where else in the country can you do research like this on this vulnerable population? It can kill these children. And we don't understand what it is about the immune system that's dysregulated that leads to these diseases. Our aim is to understand those processes, understand how the immune system is different in a premature infant from one that's born at full term, and come up with interventions to treat those infants to prevent these diseases from occurring in the first place. And I can tell you we're getting very close.